Welcome to the Hot Chicks Write Hot Books podcast with Jen Foster and Melanie Johnson, where authors give you their inside secret tips on how to be a successful best-selling author. Melanie Johnson. Today we have a wonderful interview for you with Sandy Missouri. Sandy is a number one best-selling author. She is um, she wears many hats as a professional. She is a mom. She's a serial dieter. We're going to hear more about that too. But more prof- more importantly, she's a professional balloon artist. She's a marketer. She's an educator. Um, she's a wife, and she has now become a TV personality as well, which we're really excited to hear about that too from Sandy. And her passion is balloon art, which she is written many of her books about and she loves to travel and she's an online and offline marketer. Welcome Sandy, we're so glad to have you today. Thank you so much, I'm so excited to be here. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> I bet, well tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so uh, my, my fourth book just came out in uh, November and that's this one here. I should have had all books for you, but this is my latest book, The DIY Balloon Bible for All Seasons. And uh-huh. uh, whenever I get the time to finish the series, there's two more books in the series, uh, one for all occasions and one for um, all themes. But basically, it's a step-by-step guide to make different kinds of balloon art, um, different different uh, you know designs. This one's actually my favorite. And um, so this is this is my latest book. My first book was The Ultimate Guide to Inflating Your Trade Show Profits, which I have somewhere, but I don't know where. So, <laughs> um, And that book was written for exhibitors and trade show organizers on how to use balloons to further, you know, to get a better ROI. Um, the next book was The Event Planner's Essential Guide to Balloons, and that was written for event planners on, uh, you know, how again, how they could use balloons and work with their balloon artists more effectively. But I kept getting people asking me for more of the DIY type of stuff, and so I realized that there was a need there, and that's how the DIY Balloon Bible came about. So, um, you know, the, the first book, the first book, it was kind of a lark. Um, I had heard at a conference that, you know, you could write a book, and I thought, all right, why not? So I, I did. I took all the, I took a bunch of the videos that I had been doing. I'd been doing videos for a long time, mm-hmm. and I had them transcribed. And then I went through the transcriptions and, you know, edited them for a more, um, a more written discourse. Uh, and then, you know, found where the holes were. Where was I missing information? And filled in those holes. And that became my first book. And it actually took me. It took me three weeks, basically, start to finish. It actually took me three days to do the writing of it, um, but then the rest of the time was getting it edited and sending it out to other people and making the changes and everything like that. That's amazing. So, um, yeah, so that was, that was kind of fun. And then, you said you went to a conference, but what actually motivated you to write the book? Um, the speaker was was talking about how you could, you know, write a book and publish it yourself on Amazon and I thought, okay, let's try it. <laughs> so prior to that I had not thought of writing a book. Um, in fact my husband used to always tell me, Oh, you should write books and I was like, I have nothing to say. And and so um, after that, you know, I I'm one of those I'm one of those ready fire aim people. And so once I decided that I was gonna do it, I did it. <laughs> you know? There wasn't a whole lot of um, I mean, once I decided, okay, I'm going to do this, I just put the stuff in motion and did it. I didn't right. think much about it or, you know, I just kind of just kind of jumped in and did it. Well, you were already an expert. You were already a balloon artist. and that was I was already profession. a balloon artist. I, I had already been doing video marketing for a long time. So I had, I had a lot of videos to draw on. So I didn't have to start from scratch. And I think that was probably, you know, one of the best things. Honestly, I didn't necessarily know exactly what my book was going to be on until I took the videos that I had done and figured out, well, how do these go together? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of when I decided really what the book was going to be about. And then, like I said, I filled in what was missing. Right. So there's um, there's a whole chapter that I wrote for the event organizer, which you know, which I just sat down and wrote, and wrote because I didn't have any material on that. And okay. I could see that that was something that was really necessary to make it a good book. Awesome. Um, but I think, I think for people who are, who are afraid of the blank page, 
you know, doing it with videos is a great way to do it. Just like even what we're doing right now, you know, to do a Google Hangout with somebody and interview them or have them interview you is a great way. A lot of people will pro can process verbally better than they can process in writing. Um, I definitely fall into that category. And so, you know, even having a friend interview you so that you can get your thoughts out of your head and then to get them transcribed. Well, now you're not staring at a blank page. You're staring at maybe an incomplete thought because we tend to jump around a lot when we're speaking. But at least it's enough to, to help you figure out where you want to go. And That's so it takes that, um, yeah, I think, you know, it takes that fear of the blank page away. I was going to ask you what some of your tips were to get started. That video tip is a great tip for someone to get started. Um, what would you recommend um, for transcribing? Like for me, I'd say, oh gosh, you know, she said to do video, but then how do I get it? That's what sounds really time consuming. How did you go about getting your um, video transcribed? So you can either go to Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and hire transcription is there, or you can go to Odesk or Elance. Um, all three of those marketplaces have, have transcriptionists. And what you want to do is you want to get a clean transcription. So you, you want somebody who's going to transcribe it but take out all the uh, um, ers and give you instead, you know, a, a clean transcription of what you're saying without the, without the broken, um, without the broken, you know, uh, broken words or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's really not that expensive. And if you get a good one who, with a fast turnaround, I, I mean, you know, the transcriptionist I hired, she was almost too fast. She had stuff to me so quickly that uh, I wasn't even necessarily ready for it whenever, you know, when everything started flooding in. And then I'm one of those people that I don't think on the keyboard. So I actually take everything and print it out. And my method is to literally cut and paste. And when I say literally, I really mean that, you know. I print everything out, and then I cut it all up, and then I glue it back down onto the paper, and then I write in between it, and then I go back and, and transcribe myself, you know, type up <laughs> what, uh, what I've done. So I probably make it a little bit more tedious than it needs to be, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm older, I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm still the age where we used to write things on paper. Um, and so I think better on paper than on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. so but all of my books I've done with video in one way or another. So that was the first book. The second book I actually did something very similar to what we're doing right now. I interviewed 12 professionals from uh, nine balloon industry professionals and three event planners and then took those transcriptions and wrote the book. And, and, I, and I will say honestly that book was harder than the first one because what? I was trying to juggle so many personalities and give everybody fair time and you know try to be sensitive to everybody to highlight them and uplift them and, and whatever and so it was kind of really stressful because some people just gave better interviews than others mm -hmm. so um, that was kind of interesting if, if I were to go back and do that again or if I were to write a book of interviews again either I would just print full full transcriptions I mean I want it to to break it up by themes and things like that. Either I would just print full transcriptions of here's the interview mm -hmm. or I would write I would write my points and then just bring in their supporting quotes instead of trying to worry to give everybody equal billing and equal equal time. Mm -hmm. That was that created a nightmare that I didn't need to have, you know, and then mm -hmm. everybody's everybody's egos and personalities and whatnot and you know, I should have just been like, you know, hey, this is my book and your quotes are going to support my, the you know, yeah. my thesis. So, so lesson really, learned there. To have them, uh, so the lesson learned is really just to have the interview transcribed and each person gets their own chapter, more or less, with your questions in the interview versus trying to break it up and make it more tedious versus uh, having their topics, doing topics. Yes. In mm -hmm. Yes, either that or, or to have... Um, to have made my points and then brought in their quotes from the interview just a quote here or a quote there to support the point that I was making but mm -hmm. not try to I mean if you if you look at the book the event planners essential guide to balloons you'll see I'm using a lot of block quotes and I you know I went through each and every interview and tried to pull out you know if if um, six of them were talking about a first birthday party then I tried to get all six quotes in there mm -hmm. and I didn't necessarily need all six quotes a lot of them were almost me too me too kind of quotes mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want to have you know I, I, I was too worried about giving everybody equal amount of space mm -hmm. um, so that was that was the mistake that I made there it, you know and and when I was talking to people about it you know everybody kept reminding me look this is your book you mm -hmm. don't need to worry about that but I was mm -hmm. and of course you know 
you know the old adage, right? I mean, if you try to make everybody happy, you end up making nobody happy. Right. So it became a very it, it became a very stressful experience. Although I think it became a pretty good book. Mm-hmm. Um, my my third book was co-written with a bunch of other uh, marketers. Um, so for that one, it was pretty easy. I just turned in my uh, my couple of chapters, and everybody had their own chapter. You know, that was that was much easier. Mm-hmm. And then my fourth book again, I went back to the to the formula of shooting the videos and then taking the videos, having them transcribe, adding in the pictures, because it is a recipe book, pictures are really important, um, adding the pictures, and then um, and then that makes the book. And so I think I think I will always use a video to written format, um, because it just makes it so much easier. I mean, it's so much easier to go back through, uh, to go back through the transcript and say, oh, you know, why did I say that? That makes no sense. Oh, what I meant to say is this. Right. Than, than to you know sit down with that blank page and and try to get your thoughts out onto the paper. Mm-hmm. So Sandy, you've told us a lot of do's and don'ts on your four books. Do you have any other t- like do's and don'ts for our listeners on what you would do on your next book or what you wouldn't do? Um, I think uh, I've I've done a couple of books now with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that I would be more careful. Um. If I am inviting other people, uh, not necessarily to have them as a full co-author, but maybe to you know invite them in as a contributor or to you know a photographer or some other some other um, title rather than a co-author, mm-hmm. uh, just because you know it's I'm I've wanted to be very generous with giving of titles to people, but it's come back to bite me later on. Mm-hmm. And so what I found is that I really need to um, to not be shy and to step into the position of you know look I really did do this and you know I, I it's my book and I don't you know whereas where it's not as it's nice to give out titles and to share and to lift up other people and to want to share the glory with them on the other hand then it can become a situation where for example. Um, in in the event planner's guide, one of the uh, one of the people I interviewed, you know, I, I I asked everybody to contribute a little bit of money towards the transcription, which I think it was like seventy five dollars a person, and so one person got really upset that I charged him twenty five dollars seventy five dollars to be in the book, and I'm like telling him, look, first of all, for a positioning book, you know, if you were gonna pay, it should be something like seventy five hundred. Right. <laughs> you know, because this is gonna be a bestseller, and this is, you know, I'm really gonna push this book. Um, but also, you know, then there were expectations that really didn't belong there. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think from I think from now on, I will be the the only author on the. I mean, unless I'm doing a book like the marketing book, where really yeah. truly it was ten authors, you know, mm-hmm. because we each contributed a chapter or two, and and therefore really did deserve equal billing. There wasn't one person trying to you know patch it all together. Everybody had their own separate chapter. Yeah. But I think. Um, you know, maybe to give an editor credit or a photographer credit, or there's, uh, you know, there's other kinds of credits that you can give besides co-author. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's something that I'll be more careful about in the future. Um, just, yeah. you know, even though even though you may, may think this person is a great friend of yours, it can turn into trouble down the road if you don't have it very clear what each person's role is and mm-hmm. what compensation each person is going to get out of it. And and that was where I made my mistake, thinking that oh, everybody's friends. You know, nothing's going to get ugly, mm-hmm. and um, and I think the moral of the story is even if it's your best friend in the world, have something in writing mm-hmm. so that so that your expectations of of each other and of you know who gets what credit and um and and uh um what is the word I'm looking for uh, um acknowledgement yeah it, not just the acknowledgement but even when it comes down to the money right I mean yeah. you know your book is not going to make you a gajillionaire mm-hmm. probably not if it's a positioning book um, but there might be a little bit of money that comes in so mm-hmm. you know do you have it very clear if money comes in you know this percentage is going to cover the cost this mm-hmm. percentage goes to one author this percentage goes to the other author mm-hmm. so compensation that was the word I was looking yeah, for so, so so I think I think the important thing is to be very clear with your co-authors on who is getting what and what is the compensation model mm-hmm. and, and to do all of that on paper when everybody loves each other. Yeah. Well, one idea that um, I've seen before, especially when there's more than, you know, more than two authors, like if there's 10 or 12, 
is to just pick a charity and say whatever money comes in from this book we're going to send it over to this charity and that way you kind of weed out the hey I didn't get my cut or whatever so I've seen that right. idea which is a good idea and that's that's kind of what we did on the marketing book that we all that we all wrote together mm -hmm. is you know we all kind of said look I'm we're more interested in getting this out there and and getting this into people's hands than in the you know the one tenth of the couple hundred bucks it might bring in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we all said that that the guy who did you know all, all putting it all together and all the editing and that worked the most on it. We just said you know what take this to cover what you did and um, let's get it into as many hands as we can. Mm -hmm. And but the thing was we all agreed on that beforehand. So there was right. no there was no uh, strife. There was no you know. Um, ego issues or anything like that because we had all agreed on it before the book was even put out. And right. so I think that's really the big thing is whatever course you go, make sure that everybody's agreed to it and understands what's happening before before you start. It's like having because a Because then if it becomes a big huge thing and a New York Times bestseller, you know. Mm -hmm. right. Sorry, Melanie, go ahead. I said it's like having a prenup before you get married. <laughs> you got to have it all yes. done. You got to have that business prenup. Which is in, in any partnership, it's important to do that. Like you say, yes. when everyone loves each other, get everything up down on paper. You've told us some uh, great tips on how to get your book started and things that you should do along the way. Tell us what has happened to you since you started launching these books. What has happened to you professionally with your balloon business, um, with your media business, and your marketing business? It's a uh, it's been pretty crazy. Um, I mean, with the with the TV stuff, you know, definitely. Having the books is a huge is a huge um, piece of credibility when I'm approaching TV producers and pitching myself to be on their shows. So to be able to say, you know, that I'm a best-selling author, <coughs> excuse me, and that I have this book and everything is is really huge. I mean, it takes it takes me from going, you know, being some balloon lady to being the expert, and that makes the huge difference. And that's you know really what it was all about to begin with. Similarly, with my clients, you know, since I have three different books on balloons that are written for three different audiences, um, to offer it to my clients is also, it, you know, this is often given to people who have already hired me, but it reaffirms in their mind that they made the right choice and that they got, you know, not just, not just the best one in San Diego, but they got the top balloon expert in the industry. And, you know, that's, uh, it always makes them feel good about it. And if we have to push the budget or whatever, you know, it's a little bit easier because once, they, once they're already sold on you, on hiring you, then it's just a question of, okay, how do we make the budget work? Mm -hmm. Right? You're the best. Rather right. than going... That credibility. Exactly. They're already sold on hiring us. Then it's just about, okay, let's, what can we do with your budget? And how can we make this work with your budget? And how can we squeeze what you need in, in your event into your budget? So that makes a big difference because I have a very low price competitor out here. And so originally what I wanted to do with my book and also with the TV appearances was just put some distance between us because I don't want to go down to his prices. And, you know, if people think that they're comparing apples to apples that are a little bit more expensive, then there's going to be resistance. Mm -hmm. But if they, if they think that they're looking at two things that are completely different classes altogether, then they're not comparing. Then they're not looking at how much, how much, how much, how much is this one, how much is this one. The question is just, okay, I want you, and how do we, how do we, do, how do we maximize my budget to do what we need? And that's no problem. That I can do. But if somebody's calling me and saying, well, how much is your arch? Oh, well, his arch is only this much. You know, there's not really a good way. But What's that? Story. They're asking, well, why is your arch so much better? But now you have this compelling story of why it is better and the quality and your experience behind it. Right. And I don't. And the best thing is I don't have to say it. You know, right. if they go to my website, they're going to get all of that because my sizzle reel is there. The thumbnails for my book are there. So, and of course, it's in the signature of all of my emails. So I don't actually have to say, oh, well, you know, I'm blah, 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 which is a good thing because it does not come naturally for me to pat myself on the back, you know? That's well, that kind of leads into our next, yeah, well, that, that kind of leads into our next question, Sandy, which is how do you market yourself? How do you let people know you're an author? So I always have a copy of my book on me, and I give them out pretty freely. You know, I mean, they don't cost that much, right, to get your, your author copies. About how much so, is, let our audience know about how much it is for you to have your copies. Okay, so it depends on how many pages. My first book was only 132 pages, and that one cost me about $3 
per copy. Mm -hmm. And my last book is, um, to, let's see, 200 and, I don't know, probably about 250 pages or something like that. And so this one, I think, cost me about $4 or $4.50 a copy. So, and that, and that would that would be including shipping. So it's really not that much. So yep. if I'm talking to somebody and they express even the littlest bit of interest in it, they're probably going to leave with a copy of my book in their hands. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, they're going to leave with a bit with a business card. And now on my business card, you know, it does it does say uh, you know best selling author or something like that. Um, but probably they're going to leave with a book too. Um, and and again, like I said, it's on the bottom of my email. So anybody who sends me an email, if I respond back to them, they know there is a link to there is a link to the book. Um, and uh, you know, when when I'm writing the book, this is probably the most important thing. And that is when I'm writing the book, I'm preparing my network to buy it. So I'm taking pictures of me, you know, with papers spread all around me, or sitting at the computer, or or with the with a page full of um, you know, scratches and little writings all over it as I'm editing and things like that. And I'm putting that out there on Facebook, and I'm telling people, oh, I'm working on my next book. This is so exciting. You know, will I make the deadline? Um, things like that. So when the book comes out, I have people ready to buy it. Whether they're going to read it or not, I don't know, but at least I have people ready to buy it so that we can do that bestseller drive. Right, so they're creating a buzz already. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and the, and the best time to create that buzz is when you're writing it, right? I mean, because people are interested in what you're doing, and especially when you're struggling. You know, people love to see that that hero story, that hero journey, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they see you struggling with it. They see for weeks that you've been posting, like, even if you post a picture of your blank page when you first start and you're like, okay, I'm doing it. I cleared off today and I'm sitting down and I'm going to write my book. Mm -hmm. You know, then they want to know, well, how's it going? How's it turning out? So if you just kind of keep them updated as you go through the steps, like, hey, I'm so excited. I sent my book to the editor today. You know, and people will get into that with you. And so then people want to see it when you're done. It's almost motivation to make sure you get it done because you have accountability partners with all of your friends on Facebook. They're like, hey, did you get this done? You can't just let it fall to the wayside and, yeah, I flicked out. I didn't finish writing my book. So it really is. There's definitely, yeah, there's definitely that as well, that uh, that once you've announced it and you've, you've set your intention, you really do have to make good on it because people are watching you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, so there's definitely something to that accountability as well. So um, tell us, what would you do to encourage other people to start to get off the benches, not be on the sideline anymore, and start to write their book? If they've had any inclination at all, or they didn't even know they should write a book like you when you went to the conference, um, how would you encourage other people to write their book and tell them why they should write one? Well, so first of all, just do it. It's easier than you think. And I'm not saying that it's that there's no work to it, because there is, but it's easier than you think. And most people nowadays have one of these, right? So if nothing else, just start, you know, when you're sitting in the car, just start um, talking, into your, uh, talking into your phone. Hey, it's Sandy, and, you know, this thing happened today, and it affected me this way, and I thought about this. Whatever it is, you know, so you're starting to get yourself comfortable just kind of doing this video journaling or whatever. Or once you kind of have an idea of what topic you want to talk about, then start doing those short little, short little videos on your phone for that topic. If if you're an expert in a niche, or you're trying to, or or you're trying to um, build yourself up as an expert in a niche, sit down and write out the most the, the biggest questions about your niche. What things do you hear over and over and over again? Right when you go go to a cocktail party and you tell somebody what they what you do, what questions are you asked? What questions do you wish people would ask you but they don't? Right. So giving you an example from from balloons. Right, the question that most that that uh, I found was the biggest question on the internet was, "What is the fear of balloons called?" Which is not a very exciting question. It's a one-word answer: globophobia. But what I really wish people would ask is, "What are the California balloon laws?" Because a lot of people don't know that that we have special laws governing balloons here in California, and they're not professional decorator laws. They're laws for anybody that uses balloons in California. And more to the point, not only do they not know that that we have these laws, but they don't know that even in other states they should be following these laws. And specifically, those laws have to do with how mylar balloons or foil balloons are handled. And that is that every balloon has to be individually anchored, that you can't group them together, um, things like that. So why would it matter in other states? Because the reason that we have this law in California is because 
the power companies were able to blame one too many power failures on balloons. Well, you know what? Every other state is only one power failure away from having this law put into, put into action in their state as well. Right? So if everybody's using balloons responsibly and anchoring them down and not letting foil balloons go, then other states aren't going to have the laws that we have here in California. So that's the question that I really wish people would ask me about. So there's a whole chapter on that. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a chapter on that in all of my books because it is something that I feel is so important. And since I don't, I, I don't assume that people are going to read all three of my books, I assume that they're written for different audiences. I do talk about that in every single one of them. So, so that's really a good way to get started is just write down these questions. And, and then if you like, you know, if you're the type of person that thinks on paper, if you like writing, then write down the answers to the questions. If you're not, then pull out your cell phone and just, you know, do a selfie video of you answering these questions one by one. Answer the question, stop it. Okay, go to the next question, answer the question, stop it. And if you're going to do it that way, that nobody's interviewing you, you're doing it yourself, then repeat, say the question when you first start, right? So, like, you know, people often ask me, what are the California balloon laws? And that's a great question, something like this. <laughs> there we go, there's my phone. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so do it that way. And, and these, these things will, they'll get you past, so, you, so that your focus is on your information and not on, oh my God, I'm on video, or oh my God, I have to write something on paper. Because you are an expert in what you do. You know this stuff, right? You don't need somebody to tell it to you. You don't need to go do heavy research for some of it. There, there may be some research that you need to do to get some statistics or other pieces as you pull the whole book together, but start out with what you've got inside of you. And, it, and it's there. Just, you know, find what way works for you best to just let it out. I like that. I like how you just say, just start it. Just do it. I just like do that. it. Yeah. That's, I mean... A journey of a 10,000 steps, you know, starts with one, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. so true. That's so true. Well, let's finish up with um, a funny story. Tell us, since you've written your book, is there any funny stories or anything that has happened um, to you that, you know, because of your book that are any interesting stories? Wow. Well, so much has happened because of my book. I mean, I've, I've been on TV. I was on the Today Show. I've been all over the place. I, I've been getting... Higher level, higher level gigs um, and clients that come to me. Actually, there is a funny story. I'll tell you this one. Um, so, so I had a client call me for a, a trade show, and she was asking about clouds, balloon clouds. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we didn't have a great connection or what, but I thought she was asking for like four clouds, something that we call cloud nine, which is a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple helium structure. You know, it's basically just nine balloons, which is why we mm -hmm. call it a cloud nine. Mm -hmm. And usually we'll have like long ribbon coming down from it. We sell them for about $85 a piece, something like this. Mm -hmm. And so I thought she was asking about four of these. So I told her, oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be, you know, with, with, uh, with set up and deliver, you know, set up and strike, it's going to be about $500. She's like, $500? That just doesn't sound right. I, I thought it was going to, you know, I, I figured it was going to be more like 5000 And then, you know, I'm like, oh, well, maybe I didn't understand what you were asking about, you know, so... So then, you know, we continued talking, and I realized that what she really wanted was to make the entire ceiling of, they had a very large trade show booth, she wanted to make a false ceiling and make the entire ceiling like clouds all over it, like mm -hmm. they were under the sky. Different. And, you know, so it was like, oh, yeah, we can do that. But it was, it, it, it was really funny that she was already sold on the job. She already had a really good budget in mind because of the positioning that I had done with everything else. And so even when I'm trying to tell her something cheaper, she's like, no, that, you know, that's not right. That's not what I wanted to spend. I wanted to spend, you know, ten times that. That's awesome. So, yeah. So that was, that was pretty funny. And, uh, of course, you know, I backpedaled real quick on that one. But yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, we're so happy that we got to talk to you today, Sandy. And, you know, Melanie and I are, are also helping authors um, – to write their books and we have a retreat, a book camp that we're doing in the Dominican Republic and so we'll just oh, how fun. talking about that. Melanie, why don't you talk a little bit about what's included in our in our Hot Chicks Write Hot Books uh, writing camp. And, and yes, Andy, you would be included in that if you want to just take a reprieve and get away to write one of your books. <laughs> yeah. We're going down to uh, Porta Plata in the Dominican Republic, and we have a beautiful villa right on the beach, and uh, it's a seven-bedroom villa, so we have a limited amount of how many people can come with us, and all your meals, all your alcohol, all your pina coladas, all your margaritas are included, as many as you want. Uh, we don't want to have too many, so make sure you can uh, write your book. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then we're going to use actually some of your tips that we have uh, put together with our book writing system to come down and spend uh, six days with us and get your book written and get it launched. And it's so beautiful there. Oh, and by the way, we have a chef that comes to cook breakfast for us every morning and maid service every day. Wow. So I just got back from there, and I can't tell you. It was like heaven. That, that sounds like so much fun. Actually, that's a tip that I forgot to mention, and that is that one of the things that I do is when I'm – when I'm going from, um, you know, the, taking the transcriptions and going through them, I, I usually I'll go to Vegas and sequester myself in a hotel room there for three or four days. Uh, Vegas, because where else are you going to get a hotel room for 25 bucks a night? <laughs> so I think your your Dominican retreat sounds awesome. I mean, how perfect is that? Away from all of the hustle and bustle and just with a group of like-minded people who are focused on writing. Yeah. I think that I, I I can't even imagine what kind of creativity is going to be flowing there. That sounds yeah. amazing. It's yeah. going to be lots of fun. So, well, well, tell us, Sandy, where can people find you? What's your website? And um, and then you also have an author page, right? Um, on Amazon. I do. Yes. So, um, gosh, I have so many websites. I'm not sure. Uh, which I'm not one? Sure which one? Whichever one you <laughs> which want to give you. <laughs> you know, I think I'll give you what I'm what I'm promoting now, which is the DIY balloon art. Okay. So that's DIYBalloonArt.com, mm -hmm. and this is a place where you can find um, recipes and kits and, um, and videos on how to make your own balloons and decorate for your own events. Awesome. So that's, uh, that's the, you know, going right along with the, the DIY Balloon Bible for All Seasons. Awesome. So, so you, you can visit there, and then um, if you're interested in coming on the retreat with Melanie and I, you can visit HotChicksWriteHotBooks.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sandy. I'll definitely for... have to check that out. That that just sounds like so much fun. Yeah, oh, it's, it's going to be a blast. <laughs> we are so happy that you joined us today, Sandy. You're uh, just uh, a pleasure to talk to. You're a wealth of information and super inspirational to all the authors that will be listening to our podcast. And we'll be having regular podcasts with some other authors coming up every week. So look for us and tune in to Hot Chicks Write Hot Books. We have our podcast, and we also have our Facebook group. Please join us there, as uh, well as joining us next week for our pet next podcast. See you awesome. then. Thank you. I'm, I'm definitely going to subscribe. I can't wait to see the other authors. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, y'all. For more information, you can visit our website at hotchickswritehotbooks.com or you can text your name and email address to 832-572-5285.